a anime here and in light of the new chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen this week and mostly because I stand the series I thought it'd be a really good idea to do a video on it and I had a really good chapter aside from it being primarily a setup but I mean you're always going to go back to it anyway and think oh man remember that when they had that plot point set up or when they forced out that I think this is going to be a chapter where you're going to reach back and just bring out just tiny scribbles of scenes and be like yo remember that I guarantee it. I mean, you know it. If, I mean, it's 114 chapters. You at this point, you already know. They dropped. They dropped some jewels in there. They dropped. They dropped some hidden gems in there. But we start off in the beginning of the chapter with uh, Fushi Girl checking on the body left by the curse technique that summoned his father's soul, who killed himself. So we just have uh, uh, the dude who I guess had his body rewrote by the curse. Um. And to be honest, I would have liked to see things go a little uh, more, I guess a little further with his father. I wanted it to be a little more expository. We didn't get much exposition there aside from we got a really good illustration and really good artwork of Fushi Girl, Father Fushi Girl, being what seemed to be genuinely prideful uh, or proud of his son. Look, just genuinely proud. When he asked him, what his name was and Megumi answers back Fushiguro and then he says oh not Zanin and then he kind of offs you know he offs himself uh I thought it would have been just I would have enjoyed it better if we would have got a reveal if Fushiguro would have got a reveal if Megumi would have got a reveal that that man was his father because the, the, the Fushiguro we know is the one who basically killed Gojo for like two and a half seconds right uh he didn't give a crap about his son. Just money, right? Just himself. And it's, so, to see what we saw this weekend with Fushiguro fighting his own son, Megumi, coming to realize that was his son, Megumi, asking him what his name was, getting an answer, and it's not even the name you thought it was going to be, considering you he was supposed to be adopted to the Zenin family which opens up well why wasn't he I mean it had to been something Gojo did right which I'm sure it was a simple answer just he doesn't like him so he didn't, he didn't give him to him so and and we have all that a prideful proud deceased father Fushiguro and we didn't get it he didn't reveal it kind of let me down because I wanted to see a reveal because it was a really good scene it was really impactful uh, Fushi Girl trying to sneak off to the healing lady I, think I, I can't pronounce I think it's Ikiri Ikiri or something like that and he gets slashed by the dude who I thought was already killed by Nanami don't know why Nanami didn't kill him um, but that's whack I thought he died I thought we weren't ever going to see him again I hope he dies hope he's dead I hope he's killed uh this can't be the montage because it ain't montage to begin with. So, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. That was actually a really good. So we had a really good entry. We end up going to Kasaka Bay and Panda, which and they revealed to us that Kasaka Bay is basically just stalling Panda with medial task. With the medial task of looking for children hidden in the city, scared chased by curse who they won't find because they go help gojo which he doesn't want to help gojo because he knows if gojo is trapped or in trouble then he knows it's a way above his pay grade so he wants no involvement in it and he's just i mean he's just bsing we flashed nanako who's talking to some of her old uh her former comrades who are following Geto with her um they're in disagreement this is a flashback from nanako's perspective right or I guess really from theirs, because uh, the two comrades who approach Kasaka Bay, we get a flashback of theirs arguing with, arguing with Nanako about how they're following Geto with the knowledge that he's a curse. I mean, he's a foreign brain in his head. That brain is not Geto's. That body ain't Geto's. I'm sorry, the body is Geto's. But the brain ain't. It's a foreign brain. Geto's dead, and you're following him. I don't understand this part of the story. Now, if you know, please tell me. I could be wrong. But their argument was they're following Ghetto's ideology. They are so for his ideology, they don't care if 
the person using ghetto is not ghetto which it isn't my thing is it's a curse so unless they're trying to convey to me through the manga that they're following a person who they know not to be ghetto but they also don't know not to be a curse if you're telling me that i can't get behind it it's really weird it just feels like a really lazy twist to me and they're gonna follow this man and then he's gonna say psych got you i'm a curse and they're gonna say nani a curse it it i don't know why would they even have similar ideologies ghetto wanted to kill non-sorcerers to rid curses right wasn't that his idea wasn't this ideal stronger society rid curses with more sorcerers how does that relate to a curse using a curse technique to switch bodies and working with other curses why would you want to rid the world of curses unless you have ulterior motives which i just can't get behind that you would think that you would be led by a curse to rid a world it's, it, it's just it, it's just weird if i'm wrong yo let me know i missed a plot point i missed a chapter tell me where it's at i will go read it thank you if i'm not wrong do you i mean do you see why i'm confused do you see I mean, do you see why and can someone please please explain to me why that when world war two or three or four happens the first thing nanako grabs is, is her phone i don't get it bro i mean she pulls the phone out like an RPG off the weapon wheel from GTA. I mean, she goes from barehanded to an RPG in like an instant. She's barehanded to a cell phone in her hand in like an instant. It's terrifying. It actually gives me anxiety. I don't know what the hell that phone does, but it terrifies me, bro. She pulls it out. She pulls it out like it's a it's a jewel that gives her the ability to one hit you. It's terrifying. She pulls it out with such confidence and anger. It's terrifying. Gosh, has it been explained what it does? That might help my anxiety. It might help my fear. She gives me nightmares, bro. And wet dreams. Um. But uh, so we go after the flashback. Sakabe uh, finding himself or thinking himself mightier than um, the two who accost him, approach him, who are formerly Nanako's teammates, comrades. He decides to fight them, to stall them install panda install himself to go in near shibuya gojo but before that can happen q explosion sakuna and jogo are fighting jogo who somehow is miraculously still alive i thought would have been killed i thought any other author with the same story idea would have killed jogo off just to show off gojo's power in their first uh you know combat didn't happen he's still here and he's actually moving the plot along on his side really well i think he's an okay character He's a really good character. But I think any other author would kill them off. Especially with that first fight being against Jojo. Uh, I'm sorry, Gojo. I, said jo- <laughs> I think I said Jojo just now, but this isn't this is the wrong show. I think it'd be a it'd be a um <laughs> never mind. Hey, but two more things though. Doesn't this sound oddly uh familiar? If you're familiar with uh Demon Slayer, this I mean, this is for you. If or any anime you think fits this mold mode or mode i was right the first time does it not feel like this is reaching its climax does this series this series to me feels like demon slayer I believe demon slayer one chapter 130 ish 140 ish uh Gotaro comes out which i believe was last year march was it 18 i don't know but she, she comes out and says hey uh we're in the final arc granted it was a super long arc and I enjoy Demon Slayer as a, as a manga. Super long arc. This just comes off in similar fashion where I'm I'm reading into it and I think it's ending. Now, I was going to do a video on this, um, but procrastination set in. <laughs> I didn't start the video. The chapter came out. I read the chapter. Here I am bringing it up, but I still might do a separate, uh, maybe like an analysis, uh, an analysis video just kind of showing the plot points and how I think this we're, we are going to get a finale alert. We're going to. I believe we are. That we're going to end up hearing the same way we heard from Gotaro, which I, I guess via Twitter or whatever interview, that we're going to be in the final arc soon. Akutami, the author, has already said that uh, 
he envisions the story ending when the plot lines are, are used are used up but does it not seem like the plot lines are kind of already taking their shape and we're almost to that end right where else do we have to go there's no other you, you know like where else is there for us to go the show didn't give us much world building which uh, i'm a big fan of world building but i'm fine with it. i enjoy the show still i love it i stand it obviously i'm not going to dock it terribly but we don't we don't get world building so the plot points plot lines have to be um character oriented right itadori's character arc is you eat fingers and then we're going to kill you when you eat them all that's going to be your plot point that's that's your character arc buddy he's eaten 15 already right when's he going to get back control will he get back control he's eaten 15 fingers bro all right are you gonna are you, where else can we go megamin has fought his father who he's seen for the first time as basically a zombie you know he's seen for the first time in i guess 13 years right because well no how old was he when he died like six seven was he he might have said five so i think megamin is 16 right now right so okay 11 years he didn't have the realization that it was his father but he still met him gojo he's trapped will he die will he get out what's going on there but you see where i'm getting at though where i'm saying that we have plot lines to go still but how long is the race doesn't matter if, if if we have 18 plot lines left but how long is the race how long is the race i don't think it's a long race i hope it is a very long race i hope he he gets inspired maybe i'm wrong and he just has a bunch to go but i i i'm just scared i think that we're getting to a finale here and i don't see anywhere else for this to i mean to go demon slayer I, again i saw coming from the previous arc if you've read it i mean you when we hit when we hit that training arc after uh the red light district that's not a spoiler if you heard me you don't know what any of that means if you read the, the manga you know what i mean you could tell we're wrapping up are we in a wrap-up with Jujutsu Kaisen? Hopefully, we are not. For those of you, however, who have watched uh, the promotional I had last week, the Demon Slayer one, for those of you who have watched that and liked that video, for those of you who subscribed because of that video, like I asked to be entered in the giveaway, I thank you. It was a promotional to kind of help build recognition and exposure of my channel. And I ran it for about a week. And I, I put it away for now. Thank you. You guys who responded solely to that video and got here because of that video. And I said sub and like and you did sub and like. Thank you. You are part of my foundation of my channel now you will forever be part of my foundation of my channel if i get 100 subs 200 subs a thousand you 36 individuals who subscribed because of that one video are part of my foundation and i will continue to do giveaways um the demon slayer giveaway will continue even on this video and further on up until we get a date for pre-orders or for an actual date for the movie and then i will cut it so nobody knows when we're going to get a date it the giveaway isn't going till the first showing it's going until we get a release date keep that in mind so for those of you who again have subbed in that first week of the promotional ad who liked in that first week of me running the ad you're my vips okay i'm i'm still doing giveaways I'm going to, I plan on having exclusive giveaways where only you 36 individuals can even get in. Okay? It means a lot to me. And I want to show that. However, um, we're going to look at the numbers when we get to the release date because I don't know where I'm going to be at with subs. So I'm going to see how many tickets I want to give away. Because, and it also depends on, again, like my overall head count with subs just i'm gonna spoil my vips but you know i gotta also make it fair for people who came late no i'm gonna pause um <laughs> so there's that 
that's just a little a quick snippet of, of what I have going on and what I'm thinking about doing and letting you guys know that I'm grateful. Thank you for helping me get this channel off the ground. And I hope you stay. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy my next video and the next one next year. Because hope because I want to stay here. So hope I will see you guys be more active on my channel. Hope to get more likes. Hope to get more comments, especially that helps out a ton when it comes to uh, the algorithms and who sees my videos. So thank you again, guys. And I'm Mayak. Uh, my social media is in the description. You don't gotta type nothing in. Just press the link, bro. You gotta, especially to my VIPs. Um, you gotta keep up with me and keep track of me, so I can keep up with you and take care of you, right? So I gotta keep track of you. Cause I gotta spoil you, right? I gotta spoil my guys. So follow me. Whether it's Discord or Twitter, follow me. I do plan on streaming more on Twitch. Um, follow me. It's nothing for that. It's just you keeping up with me. So when I do have giveaways, when I do have my exclusive giveaways for my VIPs, I, I know where to find y'all. All right. I even know where to find everybody. So man, thank you. Thanks for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. And make love y'all.